Good morning, Flame. I wonder if you're making preparations for Christmas yet. Maybe you are preparing in your homes, perhaps you're preparing at school. I know in the shops you will have noticed that they are definitely making preparations for Christmas. For that very first Christmas, God had to make preparations for the birth of Jesus, his son. His preparations didn't start a few days before the event, not a few weeks or even a few months, but many years beforehand, God had to make preparations. He spoke to his prophets about the child that was going to come, the one who would set people free from their sins and bring them to God. And the people heard the prophets and were waiting for this baby that was going to come. And as the time drew near, God sent an angel to Zechariah to tell Zechariah that his wife Elizabeth would have a baby. Now this baby wasn't going to be the special one, but this one was going to be one who would prepare the way for Jesus, get ready for him to come. And then we come to Mary. Mary was a young woman who lived in Nazareth. She was probably about 16. She lived with her family, with her mother and father and her brothers and sisters in this place, which was small, not very important. Her family were also not very important. But she was engaged to be married to Joseph. And I'm sure her hopes and dreams were like many other young women. She was thinking about the time when she would have a home and a family uh, with, with Joseph. But all these things were about to change. Her life was not going to be ordinary anymore. Because she, like Zechariah, met an angel. Now this angel was not small, not child size, not adult sized, but very big. And Mary was afraid. She was confused, worried and frightened. It's not every day that you see angels. Although in the Christmas story, there are many angels that make their appearance. Don't be afraid, said the angel. You're going to have this special baby and all God's promises will come, come to pass in him. What must have gone through her head? It would be wonderful to have a baby, but there were problems. She wasn't yet married. Her parents might reject her. Her friends might turn their backs. Her neighbors might be mean. And even Joseph might decide that after all, he didn't want to marry her. And in the place where she lived, and at that time, that was completely likely. Don't be afraid, the angel said. God will be with you. Even your cousin Elizabeth, though she's old, she is going to have a baby because God has done great things for her and nothing is impossible with God. So Mary said the words that God was waiting to hear and all the angels rejoiced in heaven, I'm sure. She said, I will do what he wants. I am his servant. She said yes to God. Soon after that, she went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. As she approached, Elizabeth came out to meet her. Mary, said Elizabeth, how wonderful to see you. And what a great thing that you are going to have the baby that God has promised. Now Mary, in her response, showed that when she said yes to God, she said yes, not only with her lips, but with her heart. She said, my soul praises God. I rejoice in God, my saviour. He is mighty, but he has noticed me, his servant, even though I'm just a lowly servant. And he has done wonderful things. I'm sure these two women had a lot to talk about. Elizabeth, the old one, and Mary, the young one, who were both expecting babies because of, because of God's miracles. 
Mary stayed there about three months and then she returned to her home. Mary was not, not a perfect person, but she was someone who wanted to say yes to God and to do what he said. She knew that it wouldn't always be easy, but that God would be with her. So let us, like Mary, make sure that we say yes to God, not just with our lips, but with our hearts. This isn't always easy. Sometimes we say yes with our lips, but in our hearts we think, ooh, I'd rather not really. Sometimes we say yes with our lips, but then we think, ooh, it would be better if somebody else. God knows what's in our hearts. We can ask him to change our hearts so that we say yes with our lips and with our hearts. So when God asks us to love each other, let's do it with our lips and with our hearts. When he asks us to obey our parents, let's do it not just with our lips, but also with our hearts. When he asks us to be a friend to someone, let's do it okay, not just with words, but with our hearts. We're going to pray that God will help us do that now. Dear Lord, thank you that Mary was a woman who wanted to please you and to say yes. Lord, we want to please you and we want to say yes. Will you please work in our hearts, Lord, that we might say yes with our lips and also with our hearts and bring glory to your name. Amen.